right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Picophone. And in this video, we will be tackling uh, another mission, part two, I'm, I'm guessing, of phone. I saw a lot of comments in previous videos of you guys asking me to help out with phone. And at the time when I saw these comments, I was like, I already did the phone. And I, I believe I asked one of you guys, I was like, what do you mean? I, I did the phone. They were like, no, 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 you, you, there's part two. So after I got done doing defensive or criminal defensive in the last video, I checked back on phone and sure enough, there's part two, looks like a part three and a part four of phone. So we will be diving into that right now. If you're listening carefully, you can almost hear the vibrations of the Game Master's phone. Biz, biz, biz. The screen lights up and it becomes increasingly obvious that it's time to play the game. There's no way to be sure. It seems like the Game Master is playing this one pretty close to the chest. So if it's anything like the oh, if it's anything like the first phone, part one, I'm sure there's gonna be tons of Google searches to <laughs> Help me solve riddles that this this uh, game master, this hacker, whoever this is, is asking me. So let's go ahead and start off with part two. All right. Not sure what that is in the, the background. Just, I, I have no idea. Well, let's, I can't even see the... <laughs> I can barely even see the, the app names, like the, the titles for the app. So let's go ahead and just start from the top. Let's start with Interflix. I'm guessing we're going to have to do something with the calculator. The Everything's probably going to have a password. So basically, start from the top, go in order, left to right, and we should be able to... Here's the intro, local, local news, a beginner's guide to safe cracking. Let me set the mood. You're sitting in your basement with nothing but time. You recently made a reckless bid on a storage locker at an auction you sig your significant other talked you into going to. Now you're stuck with a huge steel vault, or safe as the kids calling it these days. But that was that's it. Oh, we can open oh, we can open it up. Okay. So what do you do? There are three incredibly efficient methods to cracking open the fussy vault safe door, and I'm going to lay them out for you right now. Who am I to teach you about crack, cracking locks? I'm a professional thief who's stolen millions of dollars from various banks around the world. Trust me, I know a thing or two about cracking them open. Let's get started. Method number one, get the combination. If you're anything like me, you've got a, a penchant for stealing things. That's perfect for this method. Go ahead and, and find the original safe owner, break into their home, and steal the code. <laughs> so if you find their safe, just find out who the owner is, break into their house, and steal the, 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 the code. <laughs> According to what method one is telling you to do. <laughs> they most likely got it written down on a piece of paper that's hidden in a wall, or in a hole or a wall behind the bathroom mirror. Punch the code into a... Uh, into it, and voila, you're in. Method two, blow it up. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> Just blow the safe up. Bunch of Tannerite. No, I don't even know if Tannerite would actually do it. Uh, this isn't as conventional as the method above, but it sounds like way more fun. But despite times, am I right? Oh, but in desperate times, am I right? Uh, you'll need to get your hands on one of those cool grenade belts from the movies, although... You won't have to use the fake ones they use in the movies. They aren't real explosives. You strap the grenades to the safe and stand a few feet back, and boom, you're in. Method three, take a crack at it. If you're lucky enough to have gotten the vault and the paperwork it came with, occasionally you can find spelling mistakes purposefully, purposefully, <laughs> purposefully put in there in order to open the safe in the event the original owner forgets their code. It isn't likely, but it's worth a shot. I hope this helps. Thanks, Dr. Bobby Halliday. I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't know method three that the paperwork to a vault has mistakes purposefully in there. So that way you can enter that code in. Interesting. I didn't didn't know that. I don't know if that's true or not. Or I don't I don't know if that's true or cap. I have no idea. And vault is okay, so start from the beginning. Uh we got interflix here. The Secret History of Calculators. So this is probably going to give us an idea of how to operate the calculator. Normally, with the calculator, you have to put in some type of um, 
a mathematical problem like an addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, you have to put in something and it acts as a code of the calculator and then it opens something else up. Um, so the secret of history of calculators, no internet connection, so nothing there. Basic math for beginners. So it looks like we're going to have to enter in some, some type of formula into the calculator. But I don't see anything that we can... Putting things together. That sounds like addition, putting it together. Take me away. It sounds like subtraction. Oh! 2006, 2015, 1998, and 2000. Okay. So we need to do 2006. Hmm. Maybe 2006. I don't know if it's 2006. Putting things together. So maybe we have to put 2000. So 2006. 2015 and 198 as all addition and then subtract 2000. Maybe that's it. All right, so we got 615, 98, and 2000. Got to remember that. 2006 plus 2015 plus 1998 minus 2000 equals. Oh, there we go. It equals 4019. And now we have access to contacts and we all know that when we have access to the contacts what do we do we click on every single <laughs> name to see if there's something abnormal that pops up like sydney one thomas two mateo four clarissa four dale three octavius one ace two clark five Numbers have something to do with this, right? They have to. Sydney won. I was going to say, do we have to put these in order? But that doesn't make sense when you have Mateo and Clarissa that both have the number four. Multiple have number one as well. However, if you look at it, number one in Sydney is an S. Number two is an H. So that, that make That's starting to make a word, S-H-E. So S-H-E. S H E R S H E L or S H E R L Sherl O I O Sherlock. Okay, so that's Sherlock. Let's and this has got to be it, right? It's got to be Sherlock. So I'm typing in Sherlock into the password for App Smart. Let's see if that works. Yes, Jim, genius. <laughs> so, all right, so now we have the cameras here. Camera one, camera run, <laughs> camera one, just a bed, a little triangle, upside down triangle. Okay, camera two, living room, camera three, another little family room, sitting room, or living room, but there's a, what is that, a, a hexagon or something? No, that's a, that's not a hexagon, that's a, he that's a, what do they call them? Hept heptagon. <laughs> That's a heptagon. No, that is a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sides make it a heptagon. Yeah, because five sides is a hexagon. No, six sides is a... I, 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 apparently, I don't know my shapes very good. All right, we got a square, which is four. Triangle's three. Pentagon is... Five hexagon is six, heptagon is seven, octagon is eight. No, you think octagon is eight because octopus eight legs, but actually, a, an octagon only has seven, a heptagon has eight, has eight sides, and a octagon has seven sides i don't know if that matters but <laughs> those are the those are the uh the shapes now now you know because apparently i didn't <laughs> there's some more shapes here now these are the pentagons they have five sides so do, do each one of these cameras have yeah another pentagon 
with five sides. Each one of these has a shape. A triangle is a three-sided shape. There's a square on the floor, so three, four. And that is the heptagon, which is a eight-sided. Heptagon is an eight-sided. So that was three, four, eight, right? Three, four, eight. I see squares here, so that's another four. So three, four, eight, four. And then these are the pentagons. So that's a five. And another pentagon, five. Five sides. So three, four. What was this one? Three, four, eight, four, five, five. Three, four, eight, four, five, five. Is that going to be the, the code for our notes? Three, four, eight, five, five. I missed something. I missed something. Hold on. Three, four, eight. Shoot. Hold on. <laughs> I should be using the notes that they, they, they give me notes to use, and I just never use. I always try to do it by just memorizing it. And I just make I just love making it things harder on myself. <laughs> Three, four. I'm, I got I got to look at it again. I got to look at it. Three, four, eight, four, five, five. Three, four, eight, four, five, five. Jam genius. There we go. <laughs> so now we're in notes. We have Dear Diary. Hopefully I remember to add this to my real diary, but this will have to do while I'm stuck in the meeting. While my love for him can't be overstated, it's so destructive. If upper management found out, we'd both be terminated. They hate office romances. On the other hand, it was having to be so secretive that ruined things in the first place. Aside from the woeful love life, I'm afraid we're doing the wrong thing with our company. When I was brought on to lead this business, I didn't think I'd be taking orders from people I barely I'm barely allowed to see. I thought I'd have a little more autonomy, but they pay really well, and I'm pretty sure if I quit, they'd have me killed. That sounds terrible. It sounds like a terrible workplace. <laughs> they pay well, but if I try to quit, they're probably going to kill me. But, hey, the pay is good. <laughs> Puts food on the table. I just hope we're not talking, uh, I, I just hope we're not taking part in some kind of global conflict. General General Oz seems like a nice guy and all, but he is the general of a dictatorship. So what if he's handsome? So what if he's got that whole Clooney older guy but still well-maintained thing going on? Anyway, how good could dealing with a dictator be for us? What happens when the government gets word about what we're doing? Who's going to take the fall? One day, I'll be able to stand up for myself. So it makes me wonder if... General Oz or George Clooney, we'll have to remember those names in case something comes up that we have to look it up. It is honestly surprising you made it this far. I really thought you would have given up by now. Oh, this is an actual message from the, ma the, the game master, whoever the hacker is. I really thought you would have given up by now. You're not even close. Just stop while you're ahead. If you insist on moving forward, it's a teardrop on the, on the cheek of time. A teardrop on the cheek of time. That just seems like a weird phrase to just all of a sudden come up with. So what is a teardrop on the cheek of time? A quick Google search tells me a teardrop on the cheek of time, a name given by, I'm going to get the name wrong, so I apologize. I, <laughs> I apologize I get this name wrong. Rab, uh, I, <laughs> Rabindranath, Rabindranath Tagore for... Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal, a beautiful uh, mausoleum made by an emperor, uh, Shah Jahan. Uh, but the teardrop on the cheek of time was a name given for Taj Mahal. So that must be the answer for this next. Yeah, right here. So let's put in, we're going to put in Taj Mahal. I hope I spelled that right. I did add the space into Taj Mahal. I don't know if you need to add the space into Taj Mahal to actually get it to unlock, but I did add the space. So Taj Mahal. Yeah, it's jam genius. All right. Order receipt, phone. As much as I had hoped you would have given up on the last one, it only gets harder. I'm not 
a very social person. That's why I need a pen name. Do you think Silence Do-Good is already taken? That's right. He's a national treasure. Silence Do-Good, a quick Google search for Silence Do-Good. So, Mrs. Silence Do-Good was the pen name used by Benjamin Franklin to get his work published in the New England Courant, a newspaper founded and published by, I don't know, I didn't, it, dot, dot, dot. I, I didn't click on the actual link. But Silence Do Good was a pen name used by Benjamin Franklin. So that should be the next uh, for link. And if you don't know how to spell Benjamin, just go Ben B. Jammin. So Ben Jammin. <laughs> just like that. So Benjamin and then Franklin. Just like that. Unlock. Jam genius. Now we're going to the we're going to top social. Billy Summers the first. Let's see what Billy Summers has. Blow out my candles on 921. Love long walks on the beach, being silent to alternative universes, and I have a killer truck. I text way too much. Check my messages. Lulls. He's a king. Too bad he lives in misery. Always been considered the outsider. Some call him the running man. Others just say he's the dead zone. So these are all titles. These are all movie titles. Like, I think he created It. Lately, though, he looked thinner. Uh, with any luck, he won't wind up in the Institute. So I, I do know some of these titles. I don't know all of them, but I do know some of them. And the person that made these movies is Stephen King. And, and right there, he's a king. So it's got to be Stephen King. So let's, we're going to go back to Peak Phone and put in Stephen King on, in the next app. All right, which is the chat app. So we're going to put in Stephen King. Let's see if that works. Yes, Jim. Genius. All right, easy mode and hard mode. Do we just go easy mode? Or do we just go straight hard mode? Like, you can bring, bring it on. I got, but you know what? Let's go easy mode, see what happens. Ready? Reply to start. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do it. Taking the easy way out. No, well, kind of, but I just, look. If I know you, Game Master, you're probably going to make me go through the hard way anyways. So I might as well do the easy mode and the hard mode. I'm going to have to, you're probably going to make me do it anyways. Anyway, so, okay. But when someone tells you that you did a good job, just know they're lying. <laughs> That's rude. Don't get mad at me. I'm literally just a chatbot. I am only capable of expressing factual comments. <laughs> rude. Here we go. First question. Which country has the most pyramids? So when you think of pyramids, you think of Egypt. However, Egypt does not have the most periods. Uh, <laughs> Egypt doesn't have the most pyramids. The nation of Sudan has the most pyramids. Um, and you can find that out again with a quick search. The nation of Sudan has 220 extant pyramids. So the answer is Sudan. That was nothing. One down, one to go. What country was the first feature-length animated movie made in? What country? So, I didn't know. I I didn't know the answer to this. So I had to I had to look it up. Um, and it says here the first known animated film feature film was. I'm going to get it wrong. El Apostol by uh, Quirino, Quirino, Quirino uh, Cristiani. It was released November 9th, 1917 in Argentina. So the answer to this is going to be Argentina. Did I spell that right? Yeah, I think I spelled that right. Thank you. 
Come on, Game Master. You're holding me up. Wow, you did it. I guess it really does pay uh, to take the easy path. Wait, actually, I changed my mind. I knew you would. I knew you'd... For... Jim, cheater. <laughs> I couldn't possibly let you through without playing the hard mode. Good luck. Fair enough. I knew he was going to make me do it regardless. He, he's not just going to let you take it easy. Look, I'm ready. I'm ready. Bring it on. That's what I should have typed. I should have typed bring it on. That's what I'm going to type. Get a second chance. Bring it on. Let's go. Can't get me with anything. Nothing. I know it all. I'm a gym genius. You, an uh, you will answer four questions. At the end, I will give you what you need to move forward. Hey, you better be easy to an answer all your questions. Disclaimer, only play this thread if you want a challenge. Turn back now. Play easy mode. Don't do this to yourself. You don't deserve what's about to come. So he, he, he warns you and says, go play easy mode. And then when you do complete easy mode, he's like, ah, I changed my mind. You're going to go through hard mode. <laughs> Her life was a mysteri uh, as mysterious as the novels she wrote. Her disappearance and uh, subsequent reappearance in Harrogate Her Her made headlines. Who is she? So, no idea who this was. Didn't know any... I didn't... I'd never even heard of Harrogate in my entire life. However, I did a search, and I just asked... All I put in the search was reappeared in Harrogate. Because I didn't know who they were talking about. I didn't know. I didn't even know what time this was. I didn't know what year it was. So all I could really do was reappeared in Harrogate. And the first thing that popped up was that in 1927, Agatha Christie, and an, uh, an enigmatic visit to Tenerife. Uh, so apparently Agatha Christie disappeared and then reappeared in Harrogate. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in Agatha Christie. Make sure I spell her name right. Agatha Christie. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I would have never known that. Never. Never in my life. Impressive, I guess. Next. Bring it on. Bring it on. Of course, with the mysteries of life comes death. His starry night finally came to a close on what day in July? So the person who created, who painted this masterpiece, Starry Night, that, that's Vincent Van Gogh. Um, and in this question, they say his starry night finally came to a close. So they're talking about Vincent Van Gogh and Vincent Van Gogh coming to a close. And the only thing I can think of is somebody or a person coming to a close is the end of their life. And in this case, uh, Vincent Van Gogh was born March 30th, 1853, and died July 29th, 1890. So the day in July, the 29th. July 29th, 1890. Come on, Game Master. Here we go. Around the world in 80 days, she did it in 72. So if you search around the world in 72 days, um, it actually comes up with a book. And Around the World in 72 Days is an, is an 1890 book by journalist Elizabeth Jane uh, Cochran writing under the pseudonym Nellie Bly. So I don't know if you can use either one of those um, names, but if they're asking about this specific book, the name on the actual book, the actual author name, the pseudonym Nellie Bly should be the answer. So let's go with Nellie Bly, see if that works. And if it doesn't, then we'll then we'll use uh, Elizabeth Jane Cochran. But I think they're they're asking for the actual author, which the author technically is Nellie Bly. 
And and again, this was published in 1890, the same year that Vincent Van Gogh died, which is interesting. This is it. Your last question. Are you ready? Who am I kidding? Of course you're ready. It's not like you've got anything else to do. Well, what year do all these things have in common? Oh, well, I mean, I know, I don't know when the Agatha Christie thing happened, or I, I maybe I, I don't, I don't remember reading anything about the Agatha, or I don't remember seeing the, I don't remember seeing a, a year for Agatha Christie. I don't remember reading anything about it. However, Vincent Van Gogh died in 1890, and Nellie Bly's book was, an 1890 book. So I'm just going to go with 1890 and see if that works. If it doesn't, then we'll have to figure out something with the reappearance of Agatha Christie. Oh, it worked. <laughs> there we go. I'm actually impressed. You have your answer. Oh, I have my answer. Is the answer 1890? Is that the answer? It says you have my, that, that the fine, the final thing was my answer. So is the, is it, is it, uh, so we got messages 1890. Yeah, it is. It is. Nice. Georgia. What do you got to say, Georgia? Your 2 p.m. canceled. Phew. I literally didn't have anything planned for that. Can you get me a reservation at that sushi place I like? Seven or eight. Surprise me. Uh, how will you know what time to go then? Fair point. Make it seven then. Table four, two. I totally have a hot date. I'm not eating a, at a sushi place alone. So table for one. Yeah. <laughs> you got a letter from someone named Frank Mitchell. I specifically, it, it specifically says for your eyes only. What does the letter say? Steve, Steve's eyes only. <laughs> your eyes are my eyes. Just tell me what it says. Fine. I better get a good Christmas bonus. Bonus. LOL. It's a pizza party this year. Again, uh, it's all that is on. Uh, it's all that's in the budget. I'll tell me what the letter says. Okay. It says, Hello, Steven. You signed up for one of our packages, Advanced Safety and Combat Training Course, this upcoming weekend. This is a friendly reminder to provide your given code, Bluebird, at the front desk upon arrival. Bluebird might be something that we need to remember. Might be. Uh, don't forget to pack a swimsuit and any necessary gear for our amazing underwater exploration exercise. Warmest regards, Frank Mitchell, booking agent, cross instru uh, instructional agency. I have no clue what he's talking about. On the bottom, it has a phone number you can call. It's 248-555-0123. All right, thanks, thanks. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of uh, World War II docs lately. I don't see how that's relevant. Tanks, no? Okay. <laughs> oh, he says, all right, tanks instead of thanks. Um, this is why I'll never be a funny boss. Best to stick with what you're good at. All right. So it's possible that the 2485501123 might be a phone number, but we don't have a phone app to use unless they want us to call with our actual phone, which should, I don't know if we should try that or not. Let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, check the phone number and literally is not <laughs> a phone number that you can actively use um so i i tried calling it and it didn't work it didn't work so don't have to worry about that jerry what's going on jerry upper management needs those tps reports as soon as possible you fire the only person the only other person in the department steve and i have double the workload which means it's going to take me twice the time well then uh well they say as ap do you think that's a request or an order? Sorry, I'll get right on it. That's what I thought. Jerry, we need to talk. Like, now? Because it's almost 1 in the morning. Like, now. I'm fine texting you, but I'm not calling right now. If anyone in upper management gets words of this, I'll make sure you never work in this business again. Understand? What's going on, Steve? They forced me to fire Michael. You think I wanted to lose my best analyst? Thanks. Uh, whatever. You're my second best. <laughs> there are only two of us. Forget the semantics. Michael wasn't just fired, though. He was relocated, if you know what I mean. I really don't. I don't know what he said to you, but keep your nose out of things. Don't make the same mistakes. I can't afford to lose you, too. That's actually kind of nice to hear. Yeah, no one wants to work anymore. Impossible to hire good, obedient people. And we're back to awful. <laughs> 
For your own sake, they didn't tell you about the ledger, did they? The one with C32? Oh, no. Losing battery. I'm losing battery. <laughs> um, why would they tell me that? Oh, yeah, that's probably a good point. Delete that. So that's something about C32. All right, upper management, it's time. Yes, sir. The general is coming by today to get the paperwork started. Make sure everything is ready for the demonstration. Yes, sir. And Steve, if it's if it isn't perfect, you'll be Michael's roommate. Oh, that's not good. If Michael has been deleted <laughs> and you're about to be Michael's roommate, not good. Yes, sir. We're very impressed by your performance. Keep it up and you'll never know. You might get moved to the top floor. Wow, thank you so much. Sorry. I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> the ledger is being moved early. Verify it makes it there on time. Which box? June, July, October. So June plus July plus October. It might be a hint or a clue to something. All right, Harold. Still getting drinks tonight. Sorry about last time. I don't know what came over me. Alcohol never hits me like that. I don't think we should hang out outside of work hours anymore. Is this about the stuffed moose head and bucket of ice? I wonder what happened with a stuffed moose head and a bucket of ice. That's about 75% of it. Well deserved. <laughs> I'm so curious now. From what I understand, upper management is going to be letting go of Jerry next. I think Michael might have told him about C32. I told him to keep his nose out of it. In fact, I said, and I quote, keep your nose out of things. You can't let them fire him. I need him. You'll just have to take over for him. I can't do my job and his job at the same time. Well, then you'd better figure it out. Harold, please don't Harold and please me, Stephen. <laughs> or, yeah, Stephen, Stephen. <laughs> you do know what you're told. Yes, sir. So the person's phone that we have is name is Stephen, I guess. That's what it looks like to me. Unknown. Who's unknown? Would you like to see something very interesting? Who is it? Deleted message. How did you get that? You know what? Uh, you don't want to know what else I know. Oh, no. That's right. So you're going to do everything I tell you to do. Do you understand? Yes, sir. It's a good boy. What do you want me to do? You're going to get me the unredacted copy of C32. I don't even have access to that. No, but you know who does. There's not a chance he helps me. He will if you say the right things. There has to be another way. You have 48 hours to comply. Failure to do so will result in every major media outlet getting hold of that picture. Okay. Why would it autocorrect to okay? O-A-K-Y? I don't know why it would autocorrect to O-A-K-Y. Time's ticking, Steven. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I'm trying. He hates me, so this isn't as simple as asking him to do it. Make it happen. Oops, wrong person. <laughs> I sent a picture of a cute cat. Wrong person, sorry. <laughs> cute cat. Don't talk about my cat. Tick tock. <laughs> R&D. Who is R&D? Oh, so much to read. <laughs> are, you going to collect, are you going to come collect these samples for Oz? Yeah, give me 20. I don't keep cash on me. I mean, 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Vending machines down here, only taking singles and fives anyways. All right, thanks. Do the machines up, up there have those credit card readers? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. I'm always confused by those things. Like, can I use a debit card if it's a credit card machine? I'm pretty sure you can use either. What about those prepaid cards you, buy, you can buy at the gas station? I don't see why not. You shouldn't buy those. I hear they're scams. That's why I only go to those advanced check, uh, check cashing places. <laughs> Those are the real scams. What? Oh my God. Uh, why didn't you tell me sooner? I'm in so deep. Calm down. You don't understand. I gave them everything. I just, I'm just going to send someone down to grab the samples. Okay. Giorgio, why did you send my assistant away? You gave me specific orders to only let you pick up the samples when you asked me to make them. But I told you. Yeah, but how do I know this is the real Steve? Let me ask you something. Only the real Steve would know. What's my middle name? Why would I know that? I knew it. You're probably from the advanced check, check cashing company. You won't fool me. I'm coming down there and so help me if you don't have the samples ready. Don't threaten me. I literally manufactured biological weapons for a living. Fair point. Sorry. 
<laughs> Damn straight you are. Love you. <laughs> Thanks. You never say it back. Please, Steve, please. <laughs> the samples were perfect. The general loved it. Also, that's terrifying. I know, right? You should see what keeps happening to the test subjects. It's like gross, but you can't stop looking. We test on animals? No, 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 no. Don't be ridiculous. Okay, that's good. We use lizards. <laughs> lizards are animals. Wait, seriously? That's wild. I wonder if that's why HR told me to stop. I can only imagine. Oh, well. Uh, they're free if you can catch them. Keeps the budget low. That's so unbelievably unethical. You're about to sell a biological weapon to a dictatorship from another country, and you're worried about a few thousand geckos? A few thousand? <laughs> <laughs> you really should see what keeps happening. They get really big and then really, really small, like suspiciously small, like, honey, I shrunk the lizard small. I wish you'd stop. Hey, by the way, does your no-nonsense super hot assistant have a boyfriend? Steve, does she? Yes. Who is he? Is it Harold? I always hated that guy. <laughs> I don't know. Someone's grumpy. <laughs> oh, so wait. Uh, when we were talking to Unknown, um, we were trying to get the samples from R&D, right? Yeah, we were trying to get the samples from R&D. No, Unknown wants us to get something from C-32. C-32 might be... Uh, paperwork about the samples. I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk to June. June? Junie June, what's up? Uh, for the love of, please stop. What do you want? I need a small favor. I'm putting together some stuff for the general and they need the unredacted version of C-30. Oh, so June hates us, maybe. You've got to be kidding me. That's not going to happen. If you wanted it, he'd ask me himself. He's nervous to ask you. Why would he be nervous to ask me? I'm talking to Upper. No, no, no. Listen, can I be honest with you? Sure. I'm using this as an excuse to see you. Uh, we were doing, uh, we, we aren't doing this again, Stephen. I can't, I can't make you, but I really need your help. And I miss you, my little June bug. That's not, oh, so Stephen was having a thing with June, the, the, the co-worker thing. All right. That's not fair. Fine. But if this gets into the wrong hands, I'm not going to cover for you. I'll say you stole it. You don't know how much this means to me. You owe me anything. You can take me out for drinks and apologize for buying me a bottle. <laughs> I apologize by buying me a bottle. Deal. All right. So that was all the messages. The app's photo is password protected. The hint is not animals, but we were talking to one person. He didn't think lizards were animals. So let's go ahead and try to see if lizards is uh, the correct password for this. So not animals. It's lizards, right? Oh, yeah. Jam genius. Fake news, <laughs> news, newspaper. All right. It's got a big old Bitcoin company thing on there. Oh, we just got a news report. There's a safe here. What is this? Greasy spoon? Great. It's a dictionary or something. Or a thesaurus, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what's going on with the news. We already read the beginner's guide to safe cracking, but let's see what's going on with the local reporter goes missing while investigating phone hacking ring. Hans Crowley, investigative journalist for the BCNN, went ma missing, massing, went mass, <laughs> might be a little typo there, went massing, <laughs> went missing while investigating reports of an illegal phone shacking ring, phone hacking ring, nope, another little typo there, uh, thought, to, thought tot, B, connected to the Latest string of whistleblowing lurked documents. Is this a... Are they, it, oh, you you remember? Method three. Um, purposefully making mistakes in uh, sentences and stuff. Like purposely put there in order to open a safe, right? So what do, what do we have here? We have uh, Hans Crowley and... I missed that one. It's investigating. So that's messed up. It's inv so there's an M there. Uh, investigating journalist for BCNN went massing. So that's a mess up. It's M-A. So M-A while investigating reports of illegal phone shacking. That's a mess up. That's S-M-A-S. -S. Ring thought taught. So that's a mess up. That's 
M-A-S-T. B is spelled wrong. That's um, an E. So M-A-S-T-E connected to the latest string of whistleblowing lurked. So leak, so R, documents. So master, that, that spells master. M-A-S-T-E-R, master. Recently leaked documents have led police to... Uh, so now we're not doing anything with the word or mess, misspelled words. Recently leaked documents have led to police to, to look into a companies like Global Technologies, which have been said to be conducting unethical deals overseas. Crowley, who was last seen interviewing a representative from the CIA, went missing just hours after. The CIA refused to comment on this time. If you have any details regarding the disappearance of Hans Crowley, please contact your local authorities immediately. Headline, a surprising interview with Mayoral mayoral uh, candidate Jeffrey Gaff byline D Swift in the upcoming election. Um, you're faced with a daunting task picking the next mayor. You've heard plenty about longtime mayor Herbert Herbinson, uh, but what have you heard about his opponent Jeffrey Gaff? Graff. We sat down with the mayoral candidate Graff earlier this week to get. So, I don't even know what any of this is about. How long is this? Freaking forever. <laughs> All right, let's read it through it. Let's read through it. Uh, we sat down with Mayor Candidate Graff earlier this week to get his views on the hottest topics plaguing this city. My questions are bold. His replies are not. Oh, we're running out of battery again. All right, we're back with more battery. <laughs> What are your views of current Mayor Herbertson? That's a great question. Bill, honestly, one of the best opening questions that I've ever been asked. You asked me how I view my uh, how I view the current mayor, Mayor Herbert Herbertson. I'm truly befuddled, baffled, bamboozled, bewildered, perplexed, puzzled, confounded, disoriented, and stumped by his choices as mayor of this great city in the greatest country on earth. He chooses to spend $5 million of the city's budget on a solid gold statue of himself. I take it you don't agree with his purchase. Absolutely not. It's a complete travesty and an unbelievably childish maneuver by the current corrupt mayor, Mayor Herbert Herbertson. I'm so angry, upset, stressed, furious, mad, en enraged, irate, and infuriated by the corrupt misuse of power and funds. It looks like this guy has been, whoever um, this this candidate is, has been, has been reading a lot of thesauruses lately. <laughs> I promise no matter how much money it costs taxpayers to tear down the statue and replace it with one of me. <laughs> so he's just upset that the statue isn't him. So he's going to cost the taxpayers to tear it down and then build one of him. Author's, no author's note, he insisted on being able to bring and use a thesaurus. <laughs> so he actually is using a thesaurus. Um, you've made it pretty clear how you feel about the statue, but tell me your stance on climate change and Mayor Herbertson's climate change plan to change climate change. <laughs> Mayor Herbertson, Herbert Herbertson's plan, climate change plan to change climate change, or CCPCCC, is one of the worst plans I've ever seen in regards to actually solving the real problem with climate change. What is the real crisis with regards to the climate change? Climate change is not real. It's a myth per perpetrated by big nature. Big nature, big nature. These elite environmentalists engaged in enraging, enthusiastic evangelicals like myself. They've manipulated the media and voting base into believing their whole, the ice is melting. Oh no, we're all going to die. I'm not buying it. Ice melts every day in my kitchen. You don't see any global warming in my house, do you? <laughs> what about all these scientists saying climate change should be a real concern for politicians and lawmakers? Here's what you need to know about scientists. Have you ever seen one single scientist be good at throwing a, a good old-fashioned American football? I didn't think so, because they're not American. <laughs> That's terrible. All right, uh, how about your opponent's stance on... Listen, I hate to cut you off, but I think I'm probably more qualified to lead this interview. What? <laughs> I think you should ask me how I feel about Mayor Herbert Herbertson's nighttime escapades with the Diane lady, who, by the way, no one seems to have any dirt on. Diane Herbertson, his wife? Are they someone married to him? Are, are, are you kidding me? Wow, okay. 
Well, I don't like how he goes out and spends taxpayer money on dinners and dates for his so-called wife of his. <laughs> Wow, so you have proof that he's been siphoning funds from the campaign and using them to further his personal agenda. Well, no, but I'm sure he's doing something shady. You don't live to be in your 80s if you aren't doing something shady. In fact, the same source who confirmed Mayor Herbert Herbertson's age to me also let me in on an even bigger secret. He made a deal with the devil in order to win this election. So if you want to know how an 80-year-old man can beat a young Bronk and buck like me. <laughs> That's how he sold his soul to Lucifer himself in order to take me on. Admirable. However, this his attempts will be fruitless. He will suffer defeat at my normal sized hands. <laughs> Authors note: now that he mentions it, his hands are not normal size. In fact, they are quite small, suspiciously small. <laughs> What did you just write down on your little pad? Did you write something about my hands, which, by the way, are absolutely normal size? Like, they're so normal that I can fit into any one-size-fits-all gloves? Honestly, they might be too normal. You know what? I'm announcing it here. My hands are so normal that I'm going to back out of the mayoral race because my normal hands might be such an advantage at the polls. It could destroy our perfect, great American democracy. Are you are you serious? You're backing out of the race? Did he did he just leave? <laughs> then he did something so unexpected you have to see it to believe it. So I won't write it uh, write about it about what happened. Uh, unopposed Mayor Herbert Herbson is likely to regain control of the mayoral throne inside City Hall, which is literally a throne that Herbertson recently purchased through tax increase, specifically on grocery store employees. That is hilarious. Um. So, oh, I almost forgot about that. The very first paragraph there does spell master with the incorrect letters, the incor incorrect words, uh, which I'm guessing is going to be in the vault. Let's go ahead and see if master works for the vault. It does, Jim. Genius. This is absolutely spectacular. I couldn't be happier that you made it this far. Well, if you want this to come to a close, you'll need to answer one more question. Which lockbox is the ledger in? Which lockbox is the ledger in? Which lockbox is the ledger in? Did we talk about a lockbox in a ledger? Oh, 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 I, I, I think I know. I think I know. Um, in chat, not, sorry, not chat, messages, um, upper management, uh, down here at the bottom, the ledger is being moved early, verify it makes it there on time, which box, June plus July plus October, so that's 6 plus 7, which is 13, plus October, which is 23, so that, could that actually be the answer, could the lockbox be number 23, let's find out, check answer, yes, jam genius, let's go, <laughs> Good job. Love the mission. Absolutely loved it. And there we have it. We completed part two of phone and we are going to be on to part three in the next video. Now, if this playthrough of part two helped you guys out in any way, helped you figure out maybe some of the um, the code words, the passwords, the, the numbers, maybe it helped you figure out where the the ledger, which lockbox that the ledger was in, hit that like button. Let me know if I helped you in this mission in the comments down below and if you would like me to do part three and help you get through part three as well. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and join the Tethered. As always, thanks for watching. Love you all, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.